Enemies have been a big part of video games for a very long time. They serve as an obstacle in the player's way to reach their goal. They come in a lot of different varieties in size, color, abilities, and even personalities. But what makes a good enemy design? In today's video, I'm going to share the main things that designers do when they design enemies for a video game. Now, in order to start looking at the theory behind enemy design, we're going to look at a basic example in Super Mario Bros. In this game, Enemies are very distinct from one another. There are, in fact, several enemy types in this game, and we're going to take a look at them and see what makes them a good enemy. When designing an enemy, it is important to make them unique, and I'm not just talking about their color or attributes, but also their strength and weaknesses. In Super Mario Bros., Goombas are one type of an enemy that looks like a mushroom and can move left or right. They can be stomped on in order to beat them. Koopa Troopas have the same behavior as a Goomba, in the way that they move left or right. The difference is that if they get stomped on, they are defeated, but the player can use the empty shell that is left to their advantage. You can even use it to kill other enemies. In other cases, this shell can also damage the player if you are not careful. There are bossy beetles, which are exactly like Koopa Troopas, but are resilient against fireballs, so you can kill them as easily. There are chip chips, which are fish that fly out of water and try to hit Mario. Hammer Brothers are probably the toughest enemies in the game, and are found in the later levels. These are turtles who throw hammers and jump. They can be beaten by stomping on their head, but as a player, you run the risk of being hit by the hammers. Lucky 2 is an enemy that flies through the air, throwing a little leg. When these touch the ground, they hatch into spiny enemies. Lucky 2 can be killed by stomping on his head, but it is hard to reach since he's high in the air. Spiny is an enemy covered in spikes, and it can only be beaten by hitting it with a Koopa Troopa shell or with a fireball. Piranha plants are plants that come out of pipes. They can only be killed by fireballs, and they have a tendency to hide in the pipe for a couple of seconds and then come out to get you. If you notice, there are many enemy types in the game, and the game has 8 worlds. It makes sense to have that many enemy types to put across the levels. This allows the designers to introduce them slowly to the player, but still keeping the game interesting, while also using the same player mechanics. Now, imagine if all the enemies were Goombas, but had different colors. That would create confusion for the player, and require them to remember which color does what in order to create the best strategy to deal with them. Also, it wouldn't allow for the player to know what each enemy does. For example, in the Paratroopa design, we can see their wings, so we can know it can fly. In the case of the Spiny, we see the spikes, and that tells us that we can jump on them. These are called affordances, and are really important when designing an enemy, because they give the player an idea of how to approach that specific enemy. Now my next point is to make enemies progressively harder. Again, Mario does a great job at this. In level 1-1, you only encounter Goombas and one single Koopa Troopa. This is a great way to tell the player to expect tougher enemies later while still giving them time to learn about the Goombas moving patterns. It is not until level 1-3 that we see a variation of the Koopa Troopas with the appearance of the Paratroopas, which are flying Koopa Troopas. It is no coincidence that they are introduced in this level, since it's a level that requires a lot of precise platforming. It is a great way to ramp up the challenge for the player, so they are still feeling challenged. Imagine if all the different enemy types were introduced in the first level. Probably one of two things might happen. Either the player will just stop playing because they will feel overwhelmed, frustrated, or they will keep playing and eventually get bored. If you introduce everything too quickly, later there will be no more challenges for the player during the rest of the game. They have been exposed to all enemy types, so there is no need to master anything else in the game, so they will lose interest quickly. This brings me to my next point, which is the placement of enemies. This is almost as important as the actual design of them. There is a balance in this that is very delicate. You don't want to put too many or too few of the same enemies in a level. You want to put them in areas that create a challenge for the player, and make sure that the player has the means to use the level to their advantage to beat that particular enemy. For example, in Mario, you can use Koopa Troopa empty shells to destroy all the remaining enemies. However, you do run the risk of it bouncing off a block at any moment and killing you. Imagine if the designers went ahead and just played 50 Goombas coming at you from the start. It would get pretty repetitive over time, and the player will probably just stop playing right away. It is important for the designers to think carefully not only about the enemies, but also about the world they are creating for the player, 
and what makes sense in a particular scenario or challenge. Enemy design, of course, has evolved over time. Nowadays, there are even more and more complex enemies than there were in Mario Bros. But the concept and thought behind the design is the same. You can take a look at games like The Last of Us, Dark Souls or any other game and they share some of the basic principles that I have talked about here. Make sure to differentiate every enemy from each other, place them in locations that make sense or create a challenge for the player, don't overuse them, and make sure that every enemy is unique, interesting, and that the player knows exactly how to react when seeing that enemy. If you do all of that, the enemies in your game will be more engaging for the player. If you're wondering how to know whether you've checked all the boxes, playtesting is key. I made a video about it and will link it here for you if you need it. Finally, feel free to experiment with your own design and rules for your enemies. Remember that the things I talked about are just basic rules. You may find that something works outside of those rules, so try different things and eventually you will find something that works for your particular game. And that's it you guys, thank you so much for watching. What are the things do you think an enemy has to have in order to be interesting? Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. See you next time! <music>